Ernest Hemingway was an American writer who won the Pulitzer Prize in 1953 and the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954 for his novel The Old Man in the Sea, which was made into a 1958 film The Old Man in the Sea. His other famous works include For Whom the Bell Tolls, A Farewell to Arms, and The Sun Also Rises. He maintained permanent residences in Key West, Florida in the 1930s and in Cuba in the 1940s and 1950s. He almost died in 1954 after two plane crashes on successive days, with injuries leaving him in pain and ill health for much of the rest of his life. War wounds, two plane crashes, four marriages, and several affairs took their toll on Hemingway's hereditary predispositions and contributed to his decline in health. He was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and insomnia in his later years. His mental health condition was exacerbated by chronic alcoholism, diabetes, and liver failure. After an unsuccessful treatment with electroconvulsive therapy, he suffered severe amnesia and his physical condition worsened. The memory loss obstructed his writing and everyday life. He committed suicide in 1961. Hemingway loved Key West. If he wasn't deep sea fishing, Papa Hemingway was drinking with his mob of friends in Sloppy Joe's bar. Hemingway became close friends with Joe Russell, the owner of Sloppy Joe's, who was the inspiration for the character Freddy in To Have and Have Not. Ernest Hemingway traveled far and wide during his storied life and left his mark on many different places around the globe. In the 1930s, Ernest Hemingway and his wife Pauline lived in a Key West house purchased for the couple by Pauline's wealthy uncle. During his time in Key West, Hemingway wrote several notable short stories and novels, hosted amateur boxing matches on his front lawn, and set off countless deep sea fishing voyages. One reason that the Hemingway House is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Key West is because it doubles as a cat sanctuary. Local legend states that a sea captain, who was dear friends with Hemingway, gifted the writer a six-toed cat. Nearly a century later, the Hemingway House is populated by that single six-toed cat's many descendants. If you tour the Hemingway House, expect to see several cats, many of them six-toed, lounging on beds, chairs, and sofas. Visitors can tour the grounds of the Hemingway House and tour virtually every room in the interior. His house has been designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark that occurred in 1968. And on a yearly basis, Hemingway lookalikes descend on Key West for the Hemingway Days festivities. In other words, Hemingway's adventurous spirit forever lives on in Key West. Even though Hemingway left Key West in 1939, he left his mark on the island city. Ernest Hemingway's writing room can be viewed through a screen. If you love literary history, cats and flowers, visit the Hemingway House in Key West is an absolute must. It is widely believed that Ernest and his wife Pauline both haunt the Hemingway House here in Key West. There are multiple reports of seeing both of them quite frequently. Shortly after Hemingway passed away, people began telling stories about seeing his ghost in the open. They reported seeing Hemingway walking in and around the house and gardens. Some say that he was even playing with the cats outside. Some of the people who had seen Hemingway didn't know that he was dead yet. They made reports of seeing him out on the second level of the home. They also said he was tending to the plants out on the veranda, just like he used to do. They would wave at him and he would wave back, so they thought it was Hemingway himself. They had no idea that it was simply a ghost of the author. Many people are not sure why Hemingway's ghost is haunting the museum, because he actually died at his home in Idaho, and not in Key West. The veranda of the home 
was one of his favorite places to hang out, and he loved to say hello to the locals walking by and make them feel welcome, and that people of Key West were friendly. This is one of the areas where he makes regular appearances. The staff members that give tours of the home say they have seen Hemingway a few times in his writing room. This is a loft area where he would spend most of his time writing and working on his books. Visitors that have toured the home have said there are areas of the home where they can't even hear a typewriter. There have been quite a few sightings of Pauline as well. Many people have seen her at the top of the staircase. This is said to have been her favorite place in the home and she could look out the window here and see her boys playing in the yard and she could be with Ernest while he was writing as well. The people that live in the neighborhood say they have seen Pauline outside and smoking a cigarette at the entrance gate. This is something that she liked to do while she lived at the home. Locals say that she was often seen by the gate smoking and sometimes she would walk up and down the sidewalk next to her home just smoking cigarettes. The interesting thing about this is she doesn't put her cigarette butts in the ashtray. She would actually throw them out on the sidewalk just like she used to do when she was alive. If you decide to visit the Hemingway Home and Museum, remember that you very well may see Ernest and Pauline yourself. Who knows if you will see Pauline outside smoking or Ernest typing away upstairs in his loft. <laughs>